let's talk about inflation and, and the, the fact that you've been talking about this, this inflation creep, which, which, is, which you believe is dangerous. And the fact is that the, you know, the Federal Reserve and Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke uh, has, has targeted and quite openly said that he's targeted 2% inflation. And, um, and that, that they, the Fed, seem to feel, and a lot of the financial community seems to feel as well, that 2% inflation, it's benign, and that inflation really isn't an issue, and they don't see any signs of inflation. Man, woman on the street, I see lots of signs of inflation. Are the statistics wrong? Is their interpretation wrong? I mean, how, what is the, what do you think the well, given some, inflation rate is right sometimes now? Sometimes I think that, uh, that our experts uh, make an easy thing hard. Um, I would define inflation not as too much money chasing too few goods, which is arbitrary, but too much money. And the thing that the redundant segment of money chases varies from cycle to cycle. It could chase skirts uh, during uh, inflation in the 70s when everything went up at the cash register, or it could chase stocks and bonds as in our own day when uh, the form of inflation is called a bull market, a very pleasing form of inflation on Wall Street. Uh, but uh, the process of creating more money than is demanded for productive enterprise is inflation by any other name. And the form that it takes, as I say, is, is variable. And today, we don't have to look too far to see many forms this inflation takes. Uh, the shiniest skyscrapers in our most prosperous coastal cities are priced as they were at the peak of the real estate lunacy of 2006 and 7 all over again. Uh, Which was news to me, but th that's an yeah. astonishing fact. Commodity prices we know about, uh, new highs in gold, new highs in silver. Farmland and... Farmland in Iowa. Grundy County farmland is, is now... Uh, some of these uh, transactions are taking place at $10,000 an acre, which translates into some of the lowest rental returns on record for at least 40 years. So um, uh, the Fed, I think, is, is unconscionably complacent about the consequences of what it's doing. And let us not blink at what it's doing. It has imposed the lowest money market interest rates. Anyone remembers, indeed, they could hardly go much lower, they being at zero. Um, it has expanded its balance sheet into something grotesque, all in the space of a couple of years. Um, uh, you know, th these are monetary events uh, that have never before been seen, and indeed, never before imagined. The Fed chairman would say and has said, and, and, and what much of Wall Street has said as well, is that the, the Fed needed to take dramatic action in a dramatic time. And, and in, in order to uh, basically you know, bail us out of a unprecedented financial crisis or something not as great as we've well, had since the Great Depression, yeah. that, that it needed to, to do all of these things. And isn't it great, in fact, yeah. Uh, that we've recovered to the extent that stock and bond prices are going up and commodity prices are going up, and that, in fact, you know, is, is, a, is a, a good thing for people who work in those industries and for the household wealth. Of well, Consuelo, you're right. They do say that. They do say that. And it is certainly great for one class of society. It's great for the speculative classes. Um, in private testimony before the financial crisis uh, inquest, uh, Ben Bernanke, the Fed chairman, said that... Um, uh, he said, that I, speaking as a scholar of the Great Depression, he said, uh, um, I'll tell you uh, that the events of 2008 were, in fact, the worst financial crisis in American history, period. He said 12 out of the 13 largest American financial institutions were on the brink. Now, we ought to stop and ask why that was so, if it was so. Let's say it was. Uh, our GDP was down less than 4% top to bottom during our Great Recession. During the Great Depression, our GDP was down in nominal terms, that is to say dollar terms, was down not quite but almost half. Yet most banks did not fail during the Great Depression. During our piddling Great Recession, by contrast, we hear from the regulator-in-chief that we are at death's door financially. So something has happened to our financial institutions and to our way of doing business, which I think is, is, speaks to the monetary arrangements we have, we have elided into. Uh, we have socialized risk. Uh, we have privatized gain, uh, much to the relief of Greenwich, Connecticut, where our zillionaires live, and the unconscionable and indefensible fallout of this is that 
savers get zero on their savings balances and the speculative classes get to borrow in wholesale markets at zero and make their zillions all over again in commodities, stocks, and bonds. So I think that, uh, that the chairman um, is whistling by the graveyard, uh, and he's whistling by the graveyard uh, in, in this matter of a 2% inflation rate being harmless. It, it and let's put some numbers to that harmlessness of the 2% inflation rate. Let's, let's talk about the federal finances for a second. So but in the past five years, the, I'm using round numbers, the federal uh, debt has gone from called $5 trillion to almost $12 trillion. Yet, during that period, thanks to these little miniature interest rates the Fed has imposed, the interest bill on the public debt has risen hardly at all. The public, the government is paying like 2% plus on these trillions of dollars of indebtedness. And as a percentage of federal outlays, interest expenses, like 6.5%, it's the lowest it has been in decades. And so if interest rates were to go back to where they customarily were, where they have been for the past five decades, go to say between four and six percent, our interest expense on this debt is going to be enormous. So, so people who say that, ah, the f thank goodness for our federales, thank goodness uh, for our masters in Washington, they rescued us from ourselves. Well, yes, <laughs> in a way, uh, but the consequences of this rescue are enormous. Uh, morally, let us not forget, uh, financially and fiscally and we haven't finished reckoning them yet. So we there, have barely started reckoning them. I was going to ask you, so, so, so what are your in inflation expectations? Right, so, so my expectation about inflation is there will be a lot of it suddenly. And a lot of it by, I mean, something that people can't explain away, but the authorities can't explain away, say four or five percent, let us say. So think about what that would mean. So, uh, so, so much of our, of our speculative apparatus is powered on these zero percent interest rates, hedge funds and the professionals who invest with borrowing. Because that's what they can borrow at. Yeah, right. why wouldn't you? Can't blame them. So they're borrowing at nothing. Uh, banks are paying nothing on deposits, so banking margins are fat. You know, we are back to, uh, re, you know, so, to uh, rates of return in banking capital we haven't seen before. We are about on the verge of all-time highs in bank profits, thanks in part to this, this, this uh, un uniquely it's unusually, I used unique too, uh, a little too loosely, nothing's unique in finance. This unusual, this remar astoundingly uh, uh, twisted interest rate structure. Uh, so, um, so much of, of the structure of values and prices in financial markets are based upon an interest rate structure that is, that is, you know, that is beyond strange and it, it is certainly, it, it can't be supported forever. Tell me what this means as far as our investing, investment strategy is concerned. Nothing's going to be good, and, 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 and uh, what, again, so think how hard it is to hold back a cash reserve in this time when cash yields nothing and yields a negative because the inflation we all see is something more than zero, right? Cash yields zero. That's hard. It's doubly hard because your stupid neighbor who doesn't watch this program is making a lot of money in the stock market. How hard is that not to participate? It's, it's, you can't not do it. But, Just like the housing market right, a couple of years ago. Right, right. But stop and think what it would mean if there were a four percent, a persistent, and undeniable, un you know, or you can't explain away this four percent inflation rate. It would mean that the Fed would clear its throat and say, in the marble mouth way it speaks, that to, uh, um, uh, the party's over. Right. And they do it pretty quickly. Oh, and so suddenly, you know, um, the, 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 commodity market, the commodity markets have been the great haven for inflation, fearful people. I don't think they do very well in this moment of reconsideration about interest rates and leverage. So suddenly everything would fall out of bed, I think. I think gold would, would write itself, silver would write itself, because they're, they're money that I think would come into their own at the end of the cycle of, uh, of disillusionment. Uh, but for, the time, for a time, uh, I think there would be terrific chaos in investment markets, meaning terrific opportunities. Uh, people would be selling stuff they shouldn't sell. So people with, with liquidity, which again is, is, um, pays nothing and is, is impossible to hold when your friends are getting rich without it, liquidity would come into its own very suddenly. So cash would no longer be trash. 
cash Correct. would be precious. It would. And yeah. valuable. Yeah. Even dollar bills, which I'm in the habit of disparaging because they're paper. Jim, the gold standard. You've been an advocate of the gold standard for a long time. I was an advocate of the gold standard when there actually was a gold standard. Yes, you, in 19, were, you actually in 1914. were supportive. It would take a terrific collective rethink and it would take a, a great unfrocking of the authorities and the experts who now not only dis who don't even disagree with this, it's worse. They don't just say, Grant, you're, 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 you're wrong. They say, <laughs> it's a smiling condescension right. one can't stand. It. Right, sorry, right. So, but um, I think as, if, if I'm right, and I, I think I am, if I'm right about the dynamics of the federal debt, if I'm right about the absence of a check on our continued running of the most profligate uh, deficits, uh, and if I'm right about the, the essential, uh, the political, um, the, the social and political immorality of monetary arrangements as they now um, exist, that is to say, savers getting nothing and the speculators getting most everything, uh, it seems to me not only is the, is the mathematics of a gold standard compelling, but also the politics are compelling.